Alright, what's happening y'all? It's Rico from Street Scores and we've already done the Drake May conundrum. Now we're on to the Jaden Daniels contradiction. Of course, let me know if you want me to do like a Caleb Williams version of this. I got to think of another C word that applies and it may not even just stop at Caleb Williams. Maybe we can do some other prospects at other positions because, you know, you have like my boy, Brock Bowers, Georgia Bulldog, you know what I'm saying? Some people think he's like a top three, top five player in this draft. And then others feel like he may even make it somewhere down to the 20s somewhere in the draft. So that's a whole nother video we could possibly dive into as well. So let me know at the end of this video if we want me to do more than just Drake May and Jaden Daniels. But most importantly, right now, we're focused on Jaden Daniels. Some people feel like he's the number two overall pick. There's even some people that we're going to talk about in this video saying he's the best quarterback in this entire draft, including Caleb Williams. And then you have other people that feel like he's not even a top 20 player in this draft. It's crazy. We're going to take a look at some advanced stats and all of that type of stuff. We're going to go from all of the NFL analysts that are very high on him and why. We're going to take us a look at some stats that back that up, why they should be high on him. And and then we're going to take a look at a lot of the quotes and examples and reasons why a lot of draft analysts are lower on Jaden Daniels. And maybe not even necessarily low on him, but just prefer Drake May over him. But then there are a couple of people that are just straight up low on Jaden Daniels and don't think he's as good as every a lot of people hype him up to be. So we got to talk about how these draft analysts view his strengths and weaknesses because there's some analysts that we'll also talk about in this video that give strengths and weaknesses to say this is what he's great at this is what he's bad at take take that information and do with it as you will basically we're going to talk about whether he has the highest ceiling in this qb class some people feel like he ha he's, has the highest floor of this quarterback class i mean the contradictions are just all over the place i mean which is it some people feel like he's a safer pick than drake may some people feel like he has a higher ceiling and potential than Drake May. Is he the next Lamar Jackson, which we'll hear at some point in this video? Or is he the next Tyrod Taylor, which is another comparison that we'll talk about in this video that another analyst has said. It's all over the place with Jaden Daniels, man. Super excited to dive into this one. These type of videos, I'm not going to lie, because it's really fun doing the research and just seeing how far people are on one guy like we're all looking at the same tape no combine no testing no pro days we're watching the same film and somehow all of these people to dedicate every waking hour to what they do professionally to analyzing these draft guys and everybody's just so far apart in their opinions is crazy you would think we were watching different tape like some analysts had a few games to watch and then another group of analysts had like a different set of games to watch like some type of scientific experiment some social experiment i don't know it's crazy so we're gonna dive into all that and more sorry for the three minute pre pre intro so before we dive into all of that make sure you still follow that like button still follow the subscription button and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one stay tuned of course let me know if you want me to go ahead and do a caleb williams version of this let me know if i should go and start working on that let me know if i should start doing this for other players in the draft at other positions let me know which players you prefer and of course stay tuned for all of my mock drafts i'm working on i'm working for film sessions of a lot of these draft process especially these guys that we're talking about now Jaden Daniels, Drake, May, Caleb Williams. Of course, I got to do some film sessions for those guys. And of course, I'm still working on a lot of different video ideas. So stay tuned for like free agency mocks and things like that. I'm working on the video breaking down the commander's biggest needs and I have the stats to back it up. All of that type of stuff, man. So stay tuned and let's go ahead and get to this video right now. Let's get it. All right, so let's start with all of the draft analysts, reporters, or whoever, even just random people on Twitter with enough followers. We're going to focus on all of the ones that are very high on Jaden Daniels and why first. And then again, after that, we're going to come with some advanced stats and some pro football focus grades and things like that to back up why they should be high on him. And then we're going to move on to all of the draft analysts that are low on him. And then they're going to explain why and all that type of stuff. And then at the very end, I'm going to come to my own conclusion, all of that type of stuff. So first of all, longtime NFL scouting director Mark Ross had this to say about Jaden Daniels 
like a couple of weeks ago. He said, quote, I love Jaden Daniels. He's my number two guy behind Caleb Williams. He has so much moxie and poise and playmaking about him that he would be my guy. So longtime NFL scouting director, Mark Ross, straight, simple to the point. Jaden Daniels is his QB2 only after Caleb Williams. And then there's also another interesting point because people talk about how he's a fifth year senior and they're worried about that and yeah granted that's something you should maybe keep in the back of your mind when you're doing that valuations and if we're splitting hairs and that's like the last thing that tips you in favor of drake may then i can understand but don't act like fifth year seniors can't succeed because my boy mark tyler who is more of a drake may guy than a Jaden daniels guy but he's fair he brought up the point that Tom Brady, Joe Burrow, Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, and Baker Mayfield have all seen success varying degrees at the NFL level after being fifth year seniors. So just because you're a fifth year senior does not mean that you can just come into the league and then that's it, that you just have no chance of getting better. You are who you are as a fifth year senior and you have no room to improve, none of that type of stuff. So I thought that was really interesting. And again, that's coming from a Drake May guy. Also, if people view him as, a, as Lamar Jackson, like the Lamar Jackson that just won the league MVP for a second time, then his stock is even higher than it was before. So let's go ahead and get that out the way as well. I don't necessarily think he's that close to a Lamar Jackson. Let's go ahead and get this out the way as well. I love all three prospects. I think as a Commanders fan, we would be lucky to get either three. I prefer Jaden Daniels. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. I prefer Jaden Daniels, but at the same time, the Lamar Jackson comps are a little too hasty for me. But again, we'll dive into that soon. Also, compared to other top quarterbacks, he went against the best defenses by far. But he also had the better weapons with him. So it, does it balance out? I don't know. You do the math. You, you calculate that on your own, depending on how much you feel about that and how much that weighs on your draft and anal analysis for Jaden Daniels compared to the other top quarterbacks. And again, just to go back to Lamar Jackson again, him winning back-to-back -back MVPs. I mean, just imagine if he would have won a Super Bowl this year. Jaden Daniels probably would have went first overall with how many people feel like he's literally Lamar Jackson. But again, I want to emphasize, I love Jaden Daniels. He's my quarterback too. And I feel like we would be lucky to have him. But I think is I think Jay, uh, Lamar Jackson's a little too far, especially with Lamar Jackson's ability to not take big hits. Like, tell me the last time you've seen Lamar Jackson get hit clean like just straight up perfect tackle blown up you don't he's just like a wizard it's like he has eyes in the back the side of his head and it's like he knows when he's about to get hit and always finds a way to get out of bounds slide get down real quick he never takes big hits and i want to emphasize the fact that lamar jackson you know there's this stigma about mobile quarterbacks always getting hurt it was actually a lot of the pocket passing quarterbacks that were hurt this past season and lamar jackson played every single game and looked great not even hobbled up in any game because he's great at avoiding getting hit Jaden daniels is not that yet and also Jaden Daniels is not as fast as Lamar Jackson now Jaden Daniels is really fast but he's not Lamar Jackson fast now when he gets into the league you can argue maybe he'll be like the closest thing to it he'll, he'll be in that same tier of like Justin Fields and Kyler Murray but that's still not Lamar Jackson I just want to emphasize that now also when it comes to fit Jordan Reed of ESPN did like a full breakdown along with John Kahn and things like that about what the commanders should do. And the question was, who was the best quarterback prospect fit at number two for Dan Quinn to start his commander's tenure? And Reed said straight up LSU, Jaden Daniels. Quinn might approach this one from the standpoint of a former defensive coordinator. Who is the QB who we wouldn't want to face? And the fear factor associated with Daniels' dual threat ability makes him an appealing option for Washington, which needs a spark on the offense. And that's a really interesting way to look at it. Who are we most afraid of going against, especially year one? You could easily argue Jaden Daniels. And the reason that that logic is sound and why that why even though Dan Quinn isn't necessarily running the draft, it's more of an Adam Peters thing. So we'll see is he willing to take a risk on another guy like a Jaden Daniels who's oddly fairly similar to like a Trey Lance and that didn't work out maybe Adam Peters want to steer clear of that and maybe go with the more Justin Herbert Josh Allen guy like a Drake May whatever but either way 
Dan Quinn literally said when hiring Cliff Kingsbury that he wanted to hire a guy that as a defensive minded coach, as a defensive coordinator, the offense that he, the, one of those offenses that he's the most afraid of having to go against and scheme against, it was Cliff Kingsbury air raid system. And he wanted to bring him to his side because it's better to play with them than to play against them. And he already made use that logic to hire his offensive coordinator. I wouldn't be surprised if he used that same exact logic for how we end up drafting our quarterback. The article continues to say Daniels threw for 40 touchdown passes and ran for 10 more in 2023. Even though he is my QB3 right now, Daniels' combination of downfield passing ability and explosiveness as a runner makes him a candidate for the Washington Commanders at number two. So Jordan Reed prefers Drake May over Jaden Daniels, but when it comes to how the draft falls, he just feels like Drake. Jaden Daniels is just such a perfect fit for the commanders that he actually prefers for us to land him. He just feels like the fit is just too good. Maybe if the Patriots had the number two pick and then we had the number three pick, then he would have Jaden Daniels fall in the three. But he just feels like the commanders, Cliff Kingsbury, Dan Quinn, fit of Jaden Daniels to the commander is just too perfect to mess up and to pass up. Also, I don't know if y'all remember when Cliff Kingsbury did his initial press conference before Joe Witt. And I know Joe Witt Jr.'s press conference was so amazing that we kind of forgot the fact that Cliff Kingsbury even had a press conference that same day, like literally a couple of minutes before. But either way, when he was asked to describe his quarterback, of course, he joked and said he wants like a Pat Mahomes, who was the guy that he coached, took from an under recruited recruit like barely i didn't know about pat mahomes coming out of high school i'm pretty sure most people didn't cliff kingsbury took that ball of clay that raw potential raw talent and turned him into a first round pick now granted the chiefs did take him from a first round pick to arguably the best quarterback of all times but cliff kingsbury is the one that took him from unknown high school recruit to most people to the first round pick that we saw get selected by the chiefs and when he was asked would he prefer as a quarterback of course he joked and said pat mahomes but then he went on to describe traits and the traits that he gave you literally sounded like Jaden daniels but his last sentence kind of left the door open for maybe you know if you're mobile enough like a drake may we can make it work but the traits that he described literally sounded like Jaden daniels if you ask me and then continuing with it at coach gv dixon on the 247 sports on their twitter account he said that Jaden daniels with cliff kingsbury's air raid system along with anthony lynn's ability to scheme up an elite run game could be scary with how well Jaden daniels can throw deep which is for kingsbury and how he can use his legs which is for anthony lynn he feels like it's just the absolute perfect fit. Like basically the commanders couldn't even gone in a lab and drawn up a better quarterback fit for what they're trying to do through the air with Cliff Kingsbury and on the ground with Anthony Lynn. Also, Lewis Riddick, wherever anybody would listen on Twitter, on TV, in podcasts, he is screaming Jaden Daniels is quarterback too. On Twitter, he said no quarterback in the country threw the slot fade in 2023 better than Jaden Daniels. And I completely agree. And I feel like that's significant because one thing that a lot of smart NFL minds say is that is that the slot fade is the hardest route to cover out of really just entire football like all the football the slot fade is the hardest thing for a defense for a defensive back to just straight up cover especially man on man and for Jaden daniels to potentially be the quarterback out of this draft class that's the best at throwing that the most consistent to throw the route that kills defenses more than any other route there's a strong argument to be had there that maybe he's actually the best quarterback in this class let alone quarterback two instead of three so lewis riddick again has been i mean if you just type in lewis riddick on twitter Jaden daniels is going to come up left and right you have all kinds of video clips i'm not going to share those here if you want to do go look at those go look at those but he loves them continuing with lewis riddick on twitter these him typing this up himself the data and the tape both showing that Jaden Daniels is the best quarterback in college football in 2023 and against the best competition slash teams is when he was his best compared to all other quarterbacks. What determines where he goes in the draft and how high he is selected will not be because of what he did on the field because he was lights TF out between the white lines. And interesting point, man. Very interesting point. 
Also, you have Doug Farrar. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, highly coveted draft analyst. He did a full breakdown of Jaden Daniels. This is the guy that we're going to talk about the pluses, the, the strengths right now. But then also later when we get to why people are potentially low on Jaden Daniels, we're going to bring up the weaknesses, he said. But for now, we're going to take a look at the pluses. Again, he does pluses and minuses for Jaden Daniels. Pluses just for now. Responsible for 103 explosive plays last season. There really isn't a book on how to stop him at this point. There's no defensive scheme to limit him. Best deep thrower in the draft class and the best deep fade thrower by a mile. Took major steps forward as a pure passer in 2023. Full field reader who can go from touchdown to check down and vice versa. Most of his 17 explosive runs last season were by design. He's not just scrambling and bailing out back there. He's willing to sit in the pocket and throw the ball first and then use his legs second. And I just want to go ahead and point out the fact that, man, a lot of these mobile quarterbacks, even Lamar Jackson, especially coming out why people were calling him a running back, was that he was the type that preferred to use his legs and pass second a lot of the time. Not as much as people were blowing it up to be, though. Like him coming out of Louisville, who was a way better passer than a lot of people were giving him credit for. But Jaden Daniels was an even better, more advanced passer as far as reading the field and preferring to stick it into the pocket you know dodge pressure whatever it takes and still throw the ball rather than just use his legs all of the time he doesn't use it as a crutch he uses it as an advantage as a secret weapon whenever it needs to be utilized again doug fryer brings up the point that most of his explosive runs were by design this is a guy that prefers to stay in the pocket and deliver a pass even with as electric as he is then you have at pocket presence kurt burn kurt i think that's how you pronounce it he does full breakdowns of every quarterback and he did like a full 12 minute one on Jaden Daniels and his conclusion was Jaden Daniels is quarterback one in this draft class even above a Caleb Williams then you have Brett Whitefield another highly touted draft analyst out there he said Jaden Daniels' 2023 tape showed dramatic improvement attacking defenses downfield his overall feel accuracy ball location and pocket mechanics got much better those are all very notable he also has every club in his bag a lot to love and then he provided some clips underneath if you wanted to go check that out but basically saying that he can do anything he can make any throw it doesn't matter but most importantly a thing that no other draft analyst has necessarily brought up from the previous guys that we've discussed already his accuracy, ball placement, and pocket mechanics, especially, let's emphasize pocket mechanics, have gotten much better. Because you could argue that's something that Sam Howell still struggles with a little bit. Even though, again, I will say it again. I've already said it before. I feel like Sam Howell with this new coaching staff, with these elite developers in the coaching staff, that we're fantasizing about, oh, we can't wait till Caleb Williams, Drake Mayer, Jaden Daniels get in the hands of a Cliff Kingsbury, Brian Johnson, Anthony Lynn, Tavita Pritchard, all of those guys, David Blau. But don't forget the fact that, hey, man, if Sam Miles had the same coaching staff, maybe he would be way further along. Just wanted to point that out and throw that out there. But of course, we're taking quarterback number two overall. I'm willing to bet money on it. Also, Derek Brown, another draft analyst, said Jaden Daniels is my quarterback one and his comp form straight up Randall Cunningham, short, simple, to the point, keeping it pushing, man. Then you have David Mendelson, another draft analyst, but more of like a fantasy football guy. He talked about, he said Jaden Daniels is currently plus 175 on FanDuel Sportsbook to go number two overall in the draft. I feel like this will be minus money within the next few weeks. So he feels like if anything, Jaden Daniels is starting to trend up. Drake may may be trending down. And Jaden Daniels, even though as of today, looks like is less likely to go to the commanders than Drake may. As of right now, Ben Nas is saying Drake may number two overall to us. He feels like within the next few weeks after the combine, pro days, interviews, things like that, he feels like Jaden Daniels will actually surpass Drake may in betting odds and all of that type of stuff. And then you have Joe O'Leary, another draft analyst. He said Jaden Daniels is my QB too. As well, it's belief he presents the highest potential ceiling of any quarterback in this 2024 class. So Joel Leary feels like Jaden Daniels has the highest ceiling out of any quarterback in this entire class, including, including Caleb Williams, Drake May. And then Bucky Brooks on NFL Network said that he believes Jaden Daniels 
over Drake May just simply because several different reasons. It's like a whole video on it. But the one that he emphasized the most is the fact that Jaden Daniels just literally outperformed Drake May in 2023. Short, plain, simple, to the point. He also says something interesting with this quote, and let me know how y'all feel about this exact quote. He said, if you're going just off the tape, Jaden Daniels' tape and production exceeds Drake May's potential and projection. Really interesting quote from Bucky Brooks. I mean, word for word, exactly what he said in that video. Again, he said a lot of other things, but we'll be here all day talking about every little quote that everybody said. Then on top of that, draft guru Matt Miller said he thinks, quote, Jaden Daniels at number two to the commanders would be very deserving, unquote. And he referenced how the Ravens use Lamar Jackson as a very fast, skinny quarterback. So he's basically comparing him to Lamar Jackson, or at the very least, the commanders can use him, how the Ravens use Lamar Jackson. And, you know, with that being Baltimore and, and FedEx field being in Landover, Maryland. So that's just Maryland got the monopoly on skinny, extremely fast, strong arm quarterbacks in the NFL, which would be really interesting. But and he also mentioned that Jaden Daniels has a great personality and intangibles to basically be the franchise type of guy like night and day from RG3. And while we're here, let's go ahead and talk about this now. We got to stop with the RG3 comparisons to Jaden Daniels. I, I don't care if you do prefer Drake May over Jaden Daniels. You don't got to bring up the R word. <laughs> like, 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 basically, like Voldemort. Don't no, you don't gotta bring up RG three, man. The passing alone. We're not even gonna sit here and dive into this because I could do like a full thirty minute breakdown on how he's not RG three. The only thing that is RG three like is that he takes too many hits, but even then, it's not to the extent of RG three who couldn't even slide properly. He would slide and hit the back of his head and basically get a concussion on the field by himself. Nobody touching him. It was, every time he tried to slide, it looked bad. At least Jaden Daniels can do that. He just needs to do it way more often. He's just like somewhere in between RG3, Lamar Jackson, somewhere like right in the middle. But he's not RG3. But most importantly, just passing the ball alone is night and day. But also, like Matt Miller emphasized, he Jaden Daniels also has the personality and the intangibles to literally be the face of a franchise type of guy. Also, shouts out to Colton Edwards on Twitter for pointing out, because I'm, I'm seeing in a lot of places that Jaden Daniels doesn't throw over the middle of the field. Well, Colton Edwards went on to just literally give you exact clips of Jaden Daniels throwing over the middle of the field I thought it was hilarious shouts out to Tan Top Podcast because them retweeting this clip is why I saw it they said this tweet shows the throws you really want to see Jaden Daniels make NFL style middle of the field reads slash throws based on these clips he's showing he can do it another stigma that comes with Jaden Daniels and I can admit this is one of my concerns with him but I don't want to just overblow it and act like he doesn't do it but there's a big stigma on Jaden Daniels that once he starts to use his legs, more times than not, he's going to keep using his legs and he prefers an eight yard run rather than, you know, using his legs to extend the play and then making a 15 yard throw. He prefers the eight yard run over the 15 yard throw. That's something that's so easily coachable. I'm not worried about it at all. But from what I've seen on film, he will actually use his legs and then look down the field and make a throw. And when he does, it's beautiful. It's always some elite throw this like how did you even fit it in that window with the sideline right here perfect bucket couldn't have walked it up and handed it to him even better than how you threw it but it just feels like it's few and far between but i do want to emphasize the fact that there are clips out there of him scrambling and then throwing the ball and making a great throw and a great play but again for on the negative side of things i do want to talk about the fact that well i've already talked about it in my Jaden daniels breakdown is that i don't feel like he does it enough and I brought up the stats, I brought up the percentages that he was the quarterback out of the out of this entire class. Everybody, even college quarterbacks that aren't even a part of this draft class who will come out within the next year, two years, three years. Out of all college quarterbacks, he had the lowest percentage as far as having to leave his initial spot in the pocket and then throwing the ball. He by far, by, by the most... If he had to move his legs and use his legs a little bit, he's usually running the whole way and not throwing the ball. So, but again, that's coachable. I'm not worried about it. Also, a lot of analysts acknowledge the fact that Jaden Daniels is probably the most ready to win a game week one out of all of the quarterbacks, especially when you're comparing Jaden Daniels to Drake May. Even if you are a bigger Drake May fan than Jaden Daniels, if you had to bet your money on which quarterback was the most likely to win you a game week one, you could argue it's Jaden Daniels. 
which basically brings up the point that Jaden Daniels has the higher floor, but then you have some people saying he has the highest ceiling. So, I mean, it's all over the place. If he has both, then that makes him the best quarterback in the class. Really interesting. I mean, very interesting. It's crazy that a lot of people even view him as a better prospect than Caleb Williams. I can see the argument, but I'm still Caleb Williams number one. I'm not going to lie. But let's go to some stats. He forced 101 missed tackles the last two seasons. That's insane. That's absolutely ridiculous. Let's also just talk about the normal stats. How about this guy threw for 308, 12 yards? 40 touchdowns, only four interceptions with a 95.6 QBR first out of the entire college football landscape, of course. He also had, what, 10 rushing touchdowns with 1,134 rushing yards? Like, that's insane in the SEC against teams like Alabama. And I know Texas A&M isn't good overall, but the talent is ridiculous. The speed is ridiculous. The athleticism, Florida, not good, but still the athleticism, Missouri, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Arkansas, Florida State. Like, come on, dog. Like, the, to put up stats like that against that gauntlet and the win the Heisman is insane. Also, let's dive into some deeper stats. And I brought this up in my video breakdown of Jaden Daniels. I'm not going to do all the stats I brought up in that breakdown. If you want like a full weaknesses and strengths breakdown of how I feel about Jaden Daniels and I include more stats than I'm going to include in this video, go check that out. That's like over 30 minutes long from a couple of weeks ago. But one of the stats I brought up in that video, Jaden Daniels on 20 plus yard throws this past season, he had a 99.2 grade and a 63.6 percent completion percentage and I don't think any other quarterback in this class even hit 60 percent so Jaden Daniels was literally the best deep ball thrower in college football last year point blank period Caleb Williams and Drake may included if you want to talk about hitting a deep ball which is what an air raid system loves to do even though Anthony Lynn is going to bring a lot of running to it and even though Cliff Kingsbury has shown after they traded for Zach Ertz that he can get the tight end ball involved but there's still some air raid elements to this he's gonna want to take his deep shots if Jaden Daniels is the best deep ball thrower just period in college football last year and especially in this draft class that just sounds even more likely that we're probably gonna end up getting them but who knows things can happen but also a really interesting stat Jaden Daniels was number one in yards per attempt number one in passing efficiency Number three in passing yards, number one in passing touchdowns, and number one in yards per carry. And no other quarterback in this draft even cracks the top 50. He was number one, including all positions. If he's all of that, how is he not number two at best, at worst? That that I mean, that's a great question. That Those stats were provided by a random Reddit user. Shouts out to him, because that's really interesting. And of course, we also can't forget... I've already briefly mentioned it, but this guy won the Heisman for a reason, y'all. And I know the Heisman does not directly correlate with NFL success. Winning the Heisman does not equal NFL success at all. But still, I don't think he was just the most popular or the most exciting quarterback this past season. I would argue he played the best, period. But the question then comes in when it comes to the NFL draft. It's not about who was the best quarterback in 2023. Is projecting who's going to be the best quarterback at the NFL level, which takes us to the lows of Drake May from a lot of these different draft analysts, things that they were saying. If you remember Doug Farrer from earlier, he gave his positives. Let's dive into the negatives that he has for Jaden Daniels. He says there is a wildly coyote aspect to his predilection to take cartoonishly bad hits in the open field. He needs Tua's jujitsu guy occasionally delays in processing will have him making inaccurate throws on easy stuff especially in quick game it has an extra hitch at times when he's indecisive that allows coverage to converge could throw his receivers open more consistently as well then he finishes it with early first round grade here this is all subjective but i can't think of a 2024 prospect i want more in my facility if i were a quarterback's coach so he ends it with basically saying that it, he may be Doug Farrar's favorite quarterback, especially if you're looking at it from the point of view of a quarterback's coach. As a guy like, I'm a genius, just give me the talent, I can get the best out of him. That type of guy probably is looking at Jaden Daniels as the number one quarterback. If you're looking at traits and how he has like elite traits, you can make an argument there. But again, we've already listed the negatives right there. So 
moving on with some more and also other people that are fairly low on him and this is not just necessarily people are just downplaying Jaden daniels but a lot of people just prefer drake may and then there are a couple of people that just straight up don't like Jaden daniels we'll get there but like ian cummings he tweeted updating lsu quarterback Jaden daniels evaluation today and this was literally yesterday february 19th i'm recording this right now at 5 47 a.m eastern time going into thursday february 20th thinking he'll be locked in as my quarterback three the arm isn't at Williams May level. It's still some room for growth as an anticipator. But if you want a platinum grade, big play threat with progression and pocket instincts, he delivers. So he gives them big compliments, but he's letting you know he prefers Drake May and Caleb Williams over a Jaden Daniels. Then some of the people that's super low on Jaden Daniels. Bleacher Report, man. I don't know what he did to Bleacher Report, but golly. And I don't even see exactly who wrote this article, like the specific name. Oh, it says Derek Klassen. Whoever that is does not like Jaden Daniels. He said that he's a potential impact player based on his grading, which makes him a second round player. Overall ranked 24 out of his entire big board. And of course, he's his QB3, so he just must not like the rest of the quarterbacks. It's literally just Caleb Williams, Drake May, and then just a bunch of ugh, basically to him. And then his pro comparison was Tyrod Taylor. So there goes Bleacher Report and how they feel about Jaden Daniels. Also, I want to point out the fact that a lot of draft analysts are also worried about his one year being really good at quarterbacks. And that's, a, that's an honest criticism. He never threw for more than 15 touchdowns in a season until this past season. Then he suddenly throws for 40. So some analysts see it as like a potential outlier. Technically, statistically, and I'm a statistics guy, it is technically an outlier. But I, I personally more so believe in the fact that this is who he is from now on. He's only going to get better. Some people are apprehensive because they feel like, man, that may have just been a flash in the pan. And maybe he reverts back, reverts back to his Arizona State so just to throw that out there though but i'm personally not afraid of that one great season i feel like it just took him that much time to figure it out of course also a lot of analysts are afraid of his frame and even me as big of a Jaden daniels fan as i am i'm i am pretty concerned about the frame i can't just completely ignore it it's not enough of a concern for me to put him as my number three under a drake may but i am concerned because on top of being really skinny this man also takes a lot of clean hits man i mean he is not great at avoiding unnecessary hits yet and that's something that you can easily coach up but he'll get blasted just for an extra two yards for no reason like bro just get down and just get out of bounds that extra two yards is not worth it gotta coach that out of him because like dog we we just can't keep doing this type of stuff Like, come on, dog. I'm over here defending you, and you're gonna do me like that and look that silly on camera, embarrassing me in front of all these viewers, man. Come on, dog. You making me look bad out here, man. He be out here looking like he getting hit with a Looney Tunes mallet every now and then. Or like that huge red boxing glove in cartoons. Like, uh, you you gotta be and then you be fumbling on top of it. You gonna fumble in that clip too, man. Gotta coach that out of him. And the Alabama game ended up being called a penalty, but he got knocked out from taking a, a hit that he didn't necessarily have to take. You gotta chill out on that, Jaden Daniels. You got to, and that's coming from one of your biggest fans out here doing it. Also, Connor Rogers and Trevor Sikama, they have their own draft show on YouTube and they have to do a podcast and everything like that. They say that they feel like he has one of the weakest arms out of all of the top like seven quarterbacks not just drake may and Jaden daniels they feel like even a guy like bo nix potentially has a stronger arm than him and i thought that was really interesting because i personally just don't agree they also feel like even though he may have a higher floor than most people give him credit for so that's one positive they're throwing his way and they're arguing that he may have one of the higher floors out of the top quarterbacks in this draft class but they also feel like that he's basically just a nice middle of the pack quarterback as far as his projection to the nfl level like maybe be somewhere between the 20s and the upper teens maybe they feel like is where he'll probably be unlike like a Caleb Williams or a Drake May where they feel like he had they both have like top 10 top five quarterback potential they don't like Jaden Daniels is ceiling to that point which again is why we're here the Jaden Daniels contradiction some people feel like he is the highest ceiling in the draft some people feel like he has one of the weakest arms and one of the lowest ceilings in the draft but while also admitting that he has a higher floor than what some people believe I mean it's just absolutely crazy how much these 
breakdowns and, and, and opinions of Jaden Daniels vary around the NFL and NFL minds, man. And they playing out just said it. It's like Caleb Williams and Drake May in their own tier. And they feel like Caleb Williams is number one, but they feel like Drake May is really close to him at number two, basically like a 1B. And they feel like the gap between Drake May and Jaden Daniels is way bigger than the gap between Drake May and Caleb Williams. They feel like it's Caleb Williams, Drake May right there, and then Jaden Daniels like all the way down here type of thing. So again, people just... I don't know. And then also, you got to think about the fact that Jaden Daniels is literally the same age as Sam Howell, only by like a couple of months younger. They're both the same age right now, which is incredible. Speaking of age, do got to point this out. Drake May is only 21 years old. And a lot of people bring up the fact that even though Jaden Daniels is better than Drake May today, Drake May is, as a Jaden Daniels fan, way better at 21 years old than Jaden Daniels was at 21 years old two years ago. I have to admit that. So I can see why a lot of people would prefer Jaden Daniels because if like if they were at the same age, if you're assuming that Jaden Daniels, if Drake May can have the same ascension going into his 23rd year of age, like Drake, like Jaden Daniels did, then you could assume that he would probably be even better than Jaden Daniels because when they were both 21 years old, Drake May was better. So how about when Drake May becomes 23, which is what Jaden Daniels is now, would he be better than 23-year-old right now, Jaden Daniels? Really interesting way to look at it. Also, Chris Cooley brings up a solid point. May has only started two years while Daniels has started five. This poses two questions. Number one, how does Daniel's first two years compare to May's? And I would definitely lean towards May there. And what would May look like by his fifth year starting in college if he were to stay as long as a Jaden Daniels? And I feel like these are all honest questions that you, I, I feel I can see it from the side of the, the people that prefer a Drake May. Those are good questions to ask. Those are honest concerns. People also bring up Jaden having the best supporting cast like we briefly mentioned earlier but he also went against the best competition and best defenses like i mentioned earlier as well so again whichever one you value the most whichever one you put the most stock in it's completely up to you and also a lot of people just feel like drake may is the obvious better prospect between the two and that Jaden daniels and jj mccarthy talk all of this going on is more so prospect fatigue than anything else just a way of generating buzz going viral getting clicks and views so that's a really interesting way to think about that as well they feel like i mean just a few months ago everybody was saying drake may was number two what changed another game hasn't been played so what changed and i can see that from the point of view of drake may um fans as well i understand but now in conclusion again i personally prefer Jaden daniels from the film i've watched things can change but this one gm brings up a great point i mean there's a lot of time between now and the draft combine pro day and all of that stuff but this one gm oh my fault it's not even the gm shouts out to grant paulson for tweeting this he said that logan paulson brought up brought up a great point he said if i was a gm quote if i was a gm and i've still got to watch a lot more film to flesh out the decision I think to myself, I'd kick myself if Jaden Daniels actualized that potential in the NFL and I passed on it, unquote. And that's a great point. Because again, Drake May is more of a projection. Arguably higher ceiling, depending on how you want to look at it. But Jaden Daniels feels like he can go out there and do what he did at LSU today. Like, I feel like if you had to bet between the two, who can win you a, win you a one-week game right now i feel like most people would probably put their money on Jaden daniels right now because drake may is more of a projection like are you willing to pass on the higher floor of Jaden and then watch him go out there maybe he balls out while staying healthy which is very possible we're gonna be looking extra sad as commanders fans like if we pass on him for drake may and Jaden daniels goes to whatever other team like the patriots and is balling out as of week one we're going to look crazy, especially if Drake May is out here looking like the only raw quarterback out of the three in their rookie seasons. And then us Commanders fans is just watching Jaden Daniels on the Patriots and Caleb Williams on the Bears competing head to head for offensive rookie of the year. Meanwhile, Drake May is out there working on his mechanics in regular season games. Like I can see that scenario playing out. And it's more so if you want to look at it from regret. 
if Jaden Daniels ends up balling out, how much would you regret that decision? Even Drake May ends up being really good, you're gonna still feel a little silly. But you can also flip it the other way around. If you take Jaden Daniels and then Drake May somehow goes out there and looks like Justin Herbert and Josh Allen sooner than people um, thought he would, then you're gonna feel silly for taking Jaden Daniels. So it's either way. Speaking of either way, shouts out to my boy Mark Tyler over there at Hogs Haven. He did a survey, and as of right now that I'm looking, it has over 2,000 votes. 2,342 votes is how it finished. He asked, Caleb Williams goes number one to the Bears. Who are you taking at number two? Jaden Daniels or Drake May? In his survey, Drake May won 55% with Jaden Daniels having 45%, a pretty considerable gap. And I was pretty surprised. But then I looked at, at Commander's Realm, he did the same thing. And then on his in his survey with more votes, 2,643 votes, Jaden Daniels won 60.6% to Drake May's 39.4%. So an even bigger gap than the Mark Tyler one. But still, it's just amazing that with over 2,000 votes in both, there's just that big of a gap. One Drake May won by a considerable amount. And then another one, Jaden Daniels won by an even bigger amount. That's really insane how torn this whole situation is amongst our fan base, amongst draft analysts. It's crazy how polarizing this is. Hence, the, the really the motivation for this video and the title of it, The Jaden Daniels Contradiction, man. I mean, again, not only within our just our fan base, where it really feels like a civil war at this point between Jaden Daniels and Drake, man. That's what it's starting to look like, especially on Twitter and in my comment sections. But also how polarizing this is amongst draft analysts who literally spend most of their waking moments. I mean, they're like direct primary main line of work is to analyze draft prospects, spend hours on hours, days on days, watching tape over and over again on these guys. And all of these smart people with all of the tape that they've watched, Still, this divided is absolutely insane to me, man. The polarizing factors to this is absolutely wild. Meanwhile, I'm over here to be happy whoever we get. Again, I prefer Jaden Daniels, but I still really like May's potential. And I'm happy either way. Let me go ahead and just set that down now so nobody gets this confused. I'm happy with either of the three quarterbacks. Jaden Daniels makes me a little bit more excited. There's a little bit just more flavor to it. Like, ooh, Jaden, let's go type of thing. Drake May, I'm like, okay, I can see how we can make this work. I can see Cliff Kingsbury drawing up this off. But Jaden Daniels hits a little different. I'm not going to lie. I just, maybe it's because I'm a Georgia Bulldog watching him. What he did against SEC defenses, I just have the utmost respect for him. Just like how CJ Stroud, what he did at Ohio State versus my Georgia Bulldogs that night, after that playoff game, I knew he was my quarterback one, and it wasn't even close. Shouts out to Bryce Young in college. But after what C.J. Stroud did to my Georgia Bulldogs, where we only won because of a missed field goal that should have been made, I was like, oh, nah, he's different. He's different. No, throw away all of your previous analysts and opinions about this guy he's qb1 and arguably would be qb1 in other draft classes that's literally how i felt and i even though Jaden daniels didn't directly go against the georgia bulldogs i have very similar respect for him from what he did in the sec i mean it's just at the level of competition was crazy again he had great weapons around him definitely better weapons than what drake may and caleb williams had but still the competition I feel like it evens out and i feel like if you're projecting a guy to the nfl level i feel like with more realistic projection than a guy going against the closest things to nfl defenses with the closest things to nfl weapons i mean i feel like if anything that's in his favor if you look at it like that but also going back to my main point more so than anything else even be Beyond just how I feel about these quarterback prospects separately, individually, I'm just very confident in this new front office and coaching staff's ability to, one, identify the right guy that they want. It doesn't matter who I prefer. I'm going to give y'all my opinions on who I prefer. But at the end of the day, I'm way more excited about who they think they prefer. Whoever they end up taking is my guy. Forget who I wanted before the draft. Whoever they end up drafting, I'm behind that guy 100%. Again, not only just because they're my team and I'm a big fan, but I'm just that confident in this coaching staff, which takes me to number two, the reason why I'm super confident that and no matter who they end up selecting because of this coaching staff, because I expect them to do everything in their power to get the best out of whoever they select. That's getting the right supporting cast, designing the right offense around the guy. 
um, bringing out their strengths and weaknesses when you're designing that offense around them. The right play calls, everything. Like among many other things that teams need to do to help a young quarterback succeed, I have full faith that this coaching staff will be able to do that at a pretty high level. And also with this coaching staff and all of the elite quarterback development that they have on their resumes, I feel like we can go crazy with either three quarterbacks just simply because if you're looking at floor comps and ceiling comps, I personally feel like this is the type of coaching staff that will probably be, be able to get either one of these three guys closer to the ceiling. Maybe they, maybe Jaden Daniels won't literally be Lamar Jackson. Maybe Drake May won't literally be Josh Allen or Justin Herbert. But I feel like this is the type of coaching staff and the, the proven quarterback development we have in it that will get them closer to those comps than like the lower ones of like a Tyrod Taylor for Jaden Daniels or a Mitchell Trubisky of a Drake May. And I'm very confident in that. And when we're talking about these guys, this quarterback development group that we have, we're talking about the same group of guys or one guy, however you want to talk about it, that took an unknown recruit in Pat Mahomes and turned him into a first round pick for the Chiefs and to, so that they can carry on his development. We're talking about the same guy that had Dak Prescott looking as great as he did in college and got him drafted to the Cowboys. Rest is history. We're talking about the guy that was the that got Baker Mayfield in his first steps of development from high school recruit to college prospect before he went to Oklahoma and went even crazier. We're talking about Jalen Hurts' best season of his life, of his MVP candidate Super Bowl run in 2022. We're talking about Kyler Murray and Justin Herbert winning rookie of the year, both separately. So why can't this staff do that with these guys that you can argue have just as much talent, if not more talent, with all of this coaching experience, all of this quarterback development, proven quarterback development in this coaching staff? I know drafting quarterback is always a huge gamble. It will always be. But I believe in this coaching staff to mitigate a lot of the risk and bust potential and bring out a lot more of the boom. I, I just really do. But that's just me. Maybe y'all disagree. I don't know. My only real concern is more so how are we going to put together a good offensive line more so than which quarterback we should take? Like, to be completely honest, but I'm, I'm thinking between either of the three guys, we're good. And I'm way less concerned about which quarterback we take than how we're going to fix this offensive line for said quarterback that we end up taking so we can protect them. To be that that's my biggest worry so now i want y'all to take the time just like how we did with drake may in the drake may conundrum video in this Jaden daniels contradiction video i want you in the comment section to give me your ceiling your middle ground and your floor comps for him ceiling comp the best he can be middle ground comp what he's most likely to be and then the floor comp which what would he be at his worst if he just completely fails and literally just comes out the draft and ends up being worse than he was at lsu what would that comp be and the same person that gave us the comp for Drake May, just to let you know, Shannon Miller, because she had the most likes under this tweet for the Drake May comp. So I was just figured, hey, we might as well stick with her with Jaden Daniels comp. Sillin, Josh Allen, middle ground, Kirk Cousins, floor, Mitchell Trubisky. That's for Drake May. For Jaden Daniels, she said Sillin, Randall Cunningham, middle ground, Tua Tagovailoa, and then floor, Trey Lance. I know Adam Peters here is Trey Lance. He probably just sneezed. Like, I don't know I mean, if a lot of y'all watch anime. You know, somebody's mentioning it. <laughs> he probably, Adam Peters right now just probably woke up in his dream in a, in a sweat hearing the name Trey Lance said out loud. Um, so who knows if he may try to do everything in his power to avoid another Trey Lance. But I don't think Drayden Daniels is Trey Lance. First of all, he's the complete opposite in Trey Lance and college experience. The knock on Trey Lance and why he ended up not working out and why a lot of people who thought he wouldn't work out, which he ended up not working out, was because he only started, what, like 11 games in his college career before he got drafted? This man, Jaden Daniels, is a fifth-year senior, dog. Like the COVID exemption quarterback type of situation where only because of COVID he was able to be a quarterback in college this long so he's the complete opposite there I don't think he has really any chance of being Trey Lance but I think that's an interesting comp because Trey Lance had all of the athletic tools and didn't work out you could argue Jaden Daniels has could potentially do that same thing but I like his middle ground Tua Tagovailoa was leading the NFL in passing yards as long as you give him the right weapons to a talk of a lower, hopefully with way less injury, especially concussion concerns. And then the ceiling of Randall Cunningham, sign me up. 
But also, you have some people saying that he's a faster Jalen Hurts that can read defenses better. I love that comp. You give me Jalen Hurts faster and also better at reading defenses and more accurate? Come on, dog. Sign me up for that any day. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video. Again, give me a ceiling, middle, and floor comp for Jaden Daniels. Of course, let me know how you feel about everything in this video how do you feel about the people that's high on Jaden daniels and their reasons why how do you feel about the people that are low on Jaden daniels and their reason why of course let me know in the comment section how you feel about Jaden daniels do you agree or disagree with any of the points that i brought up do you feel like any of the stats are invalid or do you have even more stats to to back up the fact that Jaden daniels is quarterback two over drake may him being quarterback three or do you prefer drake may let me know why you prefer drake may let me know either way agree disagree do you prefer drake may i mean who do you just give me your quarterback rankings if you feel like Jaden daniels is quarterback one and caleb williams two drake may three or maybe drake may one whatever let me know all of that in the comment section as well again i've been super busy but i'm trying my best to try to get to these videos and read the replies of comments so just stay patient with me i really appreciate it let me know how you feel about everything discussed in the video and of course don't leave out without stiff arm and that like button because this means the world to me free for y'all but means the world to me stiff arm the subscription button so you stay up on all of this information i'm coming out with all these concept videos like these all of the reports of the commanders any rumors any facts any more hirings like the training staff i'm gonna keep y'all updated the scouting front office staff anything i'm working on mock drafts film sessions for these draft prospects all of that and then hit the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time i release these videos because if you don't hit that bell you're gonna get a notification like one out of every five times and some that sometimes it's even like days after i released it if you want to stay up on everything because i'm uploading videos at the very least once a day but a lot of days i'm gonna do like two and we may even get to the point where i'm doing three videos a day if you want a notification directly to your phone or wherever device every time i release these videos hit that bell next to the subscription button i really appreciate y'all stay tuned catch y'all later i'm out Dang, man, it's 6.09 a.m. Let me edit this so I can go to sleep, man. I'm tripping. Appreciate y'all, man. Oh.